Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 1st, 2020. Let's talk basketball, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You have, to me, a big mispricing. Big, right now. Over who wins the Eastern Conference in the NBA, right? Understand when a dominant team is out there, it's not uncommon for that dominant team to get bad odds like a minus 300, right? The idea is that out of four possible outcomes, this dominant team is probably going to win 75% of the time, three out of four, right? Win the conference. Well, here, for some reason, because we all have doubts about Giannis's outside game, because we saw Milwaukee look a little bit shaky in last year's playoffs, because Milwaukee isn't New York, L.A., Chicago, or Houston, because they're a secondary market, we're overlooking a truly dominant team in the Eastern Conference right now. And the odds you're getting, to me, are mispriced. Today, March the 1st, we're already into March, folks. You can get the Milwaukee Bucks at a minus 200, right? A minus 200 to win the Eastern Conference. What a minus 200 means is that they're telling you that the Bucks win the conference two out of three times, right? Let's talk about why the number should be much more than that. Let's talk about why you need to grab the Bucks at this price. I know it's tempting to grab teams like Toronto and teams like Boston on the other side of the play, but I'm just telling you if you look at this clearly, the Bucks at minus 200 to win the Eastern Conference represents compelling value, right? You don't have to worry about any team out West in making this bet because we're just talking about winning the Eastern Conference. So the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Lakers, you don't have to worry about them. The Bucks don't have to win the NBA Finals for you to win this bet. They just have to make it there. Now understand, Milwaukee, and it's really underreported, is having a truly dominant year. They have a lead of nine games in the loss column over the Toronto Raptors. Nine games. They have a lead of ten games in the loss column over the Boston Celtics and Jason Tatum. Let me just say, unlike Philly, Milwaukee is excellent on the road. You look at the Philly splits and you notice Philly on the road falls apart. By contrast, Milwaukee on the road, 24 wins, 5 losses. Let me repeat that. On the road, Milwaukee is 24 and 5. Milwaukee also is playing excellent basketball right now. They're 5 and 0 since the All-Star break. Let me just say too, just looking at the offensive numbers. Right? And I would argue that any team with guys like Eric Bledsoe are pretty good defensively, right? You look at the Bucks' defensive numbers, they're excellent. But understand, offensively, they're better than Boston, Toronto, and Philly. They average more than six more points per game than the Boston Celtics. They average seven more per game than Toronto. They average 11 more points per game 
than Philly. Right? Let me just say too that psychologically, and this matters, you don't have any situations like you have in Philly right now where people like Chris Broussard are saying that both Ben and Joe want to be the man. They feel crowded by the other. They're having a problem playing together. If you don't think this can split apart a team, then you obviously haven't been following basketball back to the Kobe Shaq era, where two superstars with a lot of talent who could win big games for whatever reason couldn't play together. Right? Milwaukee, by contrast, is hungry. Guys know they lost last year. They feel they're on a mission. So here the price is so cheap that if lightning strikes, if Giannis tears an ACL, if Chris Middleton is out for the year, if Brooke Lopez, who's averaging about two and a half blocks a game, folks, think about that. Brooke Lopez. If Brooke Lopez suddenly gets hurt and their defense takes a hit because of it, at a minus 200, you know what? You can hedge to play later. You're not paying a minus 300 or a minus 400. You're not paying New England Patriot prices in NFL futures, for example. Here you're paying a very mild minus 200. So yes, there is a chance of injury. This is the NBA. It wouldn't be the first time a key player got injured. Didn't LeBron hurt his groin just last year? Yes, injuries could upset the landscape. That's implicit in every futures bet you make. But wow, you show me a team with a winning percentage above 80%. In March, I'm talking about for the season up to now, you show me a team who's the only team in the NBA with single-digit losses. You tell me that all I have to pay is a minus 200, right? A minus 200 for them to reach the finals, no need to put a bow on the package. I'll take the play. I like the Milwaukee Bucks here on March the 1st, 2020, at a minus 200 to win the Eastern Conference. I believe this bet should be part of your betting portfolio. If the Bucks continue winning games at a greater than 80 percent rate. Understand, folks, they only have eight losses all season as I'm making this video. They're 27 and 3 at home. If the Bucks continue putting up numbers like this, good luck getting a minus 200 in two weeks. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.